Everybody, Alex Ziskin here. So Apple promised to deliver unbelievable, wait, incredible performance and battery life from their new line of in-house designed processors they call Apple Silicon, now also known as the M1 chip. I ordered the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air and just got the Air in the mail. You've probably already seen a bunch of videos here and read some articles about the good and the bad, but on this channel, I'd like to not just talk about the numbers, but actually show you how things work from a developer standpoint. So in the next few days and weeks, I'll be setting up dev environments on these machines, building code and comparing the mini against the air. And of course, I'll compare those results to my top of the line MacBook Pro with an Intel i9 in it. So to see whether the benchmarks actually matter for us developers, or do they matter just for video creators and Photoshop gurus? If you are a Windows or Linux user, you'll also benefit from Apple's latest move, more on that in just a minute. Many developers out there use Macs for dev work. I was a diehard Windows user myself until I tried running Windows on a Mac as a virtual machine and got better performance than I did on a PC. Eventually, I just switched as much of my workflow as possible to Mac anyway, virtually eliminating my need for Windows these days, except the occasional .NET project that I work on. Well, that was seven years ago and the Macs have only gotten better since. Now, Apple's promise of innovation is actually coming around again with their new chips, the M1. And I think that they've really walked the talk this time. Now, I'm just speculating here because I didn't actually dig in yet, but I will be. But no wonder they have such a diehard following. It's because they actually deliver. It might take a few years of them to truly innovate, but eventually they do, and that's what they've done now. So what if you aren't using a new Mac and you never wanna use a Mac? How does this help you? Let's back up for just a bit and discuss what M1 is in a sentence or two. M1 is a chip that integrates the processor, video, and memory, as well as other functions into the chip. This integrated system is what significantly improves performance, avoiding copying data back and forth multiple times between different components, and instead sharing memory. The proximity of these components make a huge difference. It might not seem like much, but even a 20 centimeter motherboard circuit hop when multiplied by billions and trillions of operations add up. This is why stock trading companies like to be in New York so they can make much faster trades due to their proximity to the exchange. Not the best analogy, maybe, but it kind of makes sense. Electricity has to go by wire or by light and all those things take time. So the shorter, the better. So back to it. Apple showing a significant performance and battery improvement has already made waves. They're going to turn many devs over to their side, but if you aren't one of them, you'll benefit indirectly anyway. Other chip makers will start to feel the pressure to create their own innovative versions of the integral model that Apple M1 chip has. And PC manufacturers might even take note and create their own chips or partner with chip makers that go the integrated route. I'm looking at you, Microsoft. I returned my Surface book last year, but maybe I'll give it another shot this year. I don't know. So these chip manufacturers became complacent in the last many years, didn't innovate enough, and now Apple will force their hand to compete. So for now, PCs have to deal with the Intels of the world until they catch up. By the way, if you wanna see a showdown between Mac and PC speeds, comment down below, and I may do a side-by-side -side build test. So imagine more and more machines out there being twice as fast and lasting twice as long, Macs and PCs. This can only be good for developers and will directly translate into higher developer productivity. Builds will be much faster, live syncing will be faster, making iterative development faster too. And you know we love our iterative development. When was the last time you wrote code for eight hours in a day and at the end of the day kicked off a build 
that you would check the next day. That's not how I work now, and that's not how many developers work these days. Certainly not JavaScript devs. We want to iterate quickly, which means we have a constantly building app that automatically syncs our changes into the running application as we make the changes. Sure, your full builds will also build faster, but it's the gains made here at the iterative level that are going to be staggering. Now, I develop mobile apps using JavaScript, using the iterative development approach, so I will definitely pick up a lot of the benefits from this move in the years to come. I personally welcome it, and I feel it'll only move us forward. Now, in summary, I see Apple Silicon as a huge benefit to developer productivity, directly and indirectly. Good for them. So that's it for me for today. Please consider subscribing to follow this developer's experience with the new Apple Silicon. I'll see you in the next one.